Hello everyone, it's my pleasure and a great honor to share with you this very important lecture about quantification of left ventricular volumes, uses and drawbacks. We will talk about short introduction, technique and the normal values, uses, advantages and the limitations, and finally the take home messages. Let's start with short introduction. The most commonly used parameters to describe the left ventricular size include linear dimensions using 2D or M mode and left ventricular volumes. Measurements are commonly reported for in the diastole and in the systole which are then used to derive parameters of global left ventricular function. To allow comparison among individuals with different body sizes, a chamber measurements should be reported indexed to body surface area. This is a very nice example for 2D guided linear left ventricular measurements. We assess the septal and the posterior wall thickness in 2D, and we assess the left ventricular end diastolic uh, diameter and left ventricular end systolic diameter to derive or to calculate the left ventricular ejection fraction. And this is a recommended method by the European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging 2D from parasternal long axis view. The alternative method is to use the M mode for calculation of the left ventricular dimensions and the left ventricular ejection fraction. Left ventricular volumes are measured using either 2D or 3D echo. Volume calculations derived from linear measurements may be inaccurate because they rely on the assumption of fixed geometric left ventricular shape such as prolate ellipsoid method which doesn't apply in a variety of cardiac pathologies. Accordingly, the Tickles method and the Kinones method for calculating the left ventricular volumes from the LV linear dimensions are no longer recommended for clinical use. The most commonly used method for 2D echocardiographic volume calculation is the biplane method of disk summation or modified Samson rule, which is the recommended 2D echocardiographic method by the American Society of Echocardiography Guidelines. An alternative method to calculate the LV volumes when apical endocardial definition preclude accurate tracing is the area length method in which the LV is assumed to be polyt in shape. What about the technique and the normal values? How to perform bipolar Simpson method. Bipolar measurement is obtained by tracing the blood tissue interface of the endocardial border within the left ventricular cavity. The tracing is connected with a straight line at the mitral valve level from the lateral to medial mitral annulus point. The height of the cavity is taken from the middle point of the straight line across the mitral valve annulus to the most distal point of the left ventricular apex, as shown here in this picture. Bipolar measurements are routinely performed in both apical 4 and apical 2 chamber views at end diastole and end systole. So again, the steps are as follows. Step number one, zoom and focus on the left ventricular cavity. 
step two, place and set cursor on the mitral valve annulus. Step number three, trace blood tissue interface along the endocardial border. And step four, set cursor to complete the tracing. The machine will create a straight line to connect the, the original cursor. What about the pitfalls of Simpson method? Pitfalls to avoid. Number one, don't include the papillary muscle or trabeculations in the endocardial tracing. Avoid foreshortening of the left ventricular apex and make sure that the LV lens is perpendicular to the base width. Let's look for this example. This is the correct tracing as we don't include the trapeculation or the papillary muscle. This is a wrong tracing as it included the trapeculation and the papillary muscle. Avoid foreshortened LV apex. We can see that the apical uh, cap is um, pinched out and the apex should be at the same location in systole and diastole. Look for this example, the apex at the same level in systole and the diastole. While the incorrect measurement, we can notice that the apex, the foreshortened apex is at a lower position as compared to the correct apex or the true apex. And finally, the length must be perpendicular to the base width and avoid the dead space. The red circles highlight the dead space which wasn't included first so this will underestimate the left ventricular volume important tips number one 2d echo image acquisition should aim to maximize the left ventricular area while avoiding foreshortening of the lv cavity which results in volume underestimation Acquiring the left ventricular views at a reduced depth to focus on the LV cavity will reduce the likelihood of foreshort foreshortening and will minimize the errors in endocardial border tracing. Contrast agents should be used when needed to improve the endocardial delineation. When two or more contiguous left ventricular Endocardial segments are poorly visualized in apical views as bare published guidelines. What about the normal dimensions? The left ventricular end diastolic volume is ranging from 60 to up to 150 in male and ranging from 46 to 106 in female. The left ventricular in the systolic volume is ranging from 21 to 61 in male and ranging from 14 to 42 in female. What about the upper limits of normal range for the indexed parameters? For left ventricular volumes acquired from 2D. Left ventricular in the diastolic volume indexed to the body surface area. The upper limit in male is 74 and the upper limit in female is 61. Left ventricular in the systolic volume indexed to the body surface area up to 31 in male and up to 24 in female. And finally, the upper limits of normal, normal range for the left ventricular volumes acquired by 3D echo. The left ventricular end diastolic volume indexed to the body surface area 
is up to 79 in, in, in males and up to 71 in females. The left ventricular in the systolic volume index to the body surface area is 32 in male and 28 in female. What about the uses of left ventricular volumes? What about the uses of uh, left ventricular volumes? The first use is to assess the left ventricular size, especially in patients with normal size of the left ventricular base, but enlarged mid-ventricular and the distal portion. In these patients, left ventricular volume would be a better marker of LV size than linear dimension measured at the LV base, as the linear dimension will underestimate the left ventricular size. The second use is to assess the ejection fraction. The biplane Samson method is currently the recommended 2D method to assess the LV ejection fraction by the American Society of Echo Guidelines. And in patients with good quality image, 3D echo based ejection fraction are also accurate and reproducible and should be used when available and feasible. Driving the global LV function parameters from the linear the measurements is problematic when there are regional wall motion abnormalities due to coronary artery disease or conduction abnormalities. So for this kind of patient, it is recommended to assess the ejection fraction derived from LV volumes. In cancer patients receiving chemotherapy, it is also recommended to assess the ejection fraction from the 3D derived left ventricular volumes. What about the advantages and limitations? The advantage and the limitation of the biplane Samson method is it correct for the shape distortion and less geometric assumption as compared to the linear dimensions. The limitations include the apex is frequently foreshortened, endocardial border dropout, blind to shape distortion not visualized in the apical to and apical for chamber views. Advantage and limitation of the 3D derived left ventricular volumes. Number one, there is no geometric assumption and unaffected by foreshortening and more accurate and reproducible as compared to other imaging modalities. The disadvantages include lower temporal resolution, less published data on the normal values and the image quality dependent. So my final take home messages. Left ventricular size should be routinely assessed on 2D echo by calculating the volumes using the biplane Simpson method in lab with expertise in 3D echo. 3D measurement and reporting of the LV volume is recommended when feasible, depending on the baseline 2D image quality. The left ventricular size and the measurement should be reported indexed to the body surface area. Left ventricular systolic function should be routinely assessed using 2D or 3D echo by calculating the ejection fraction from end diastolic and end systolic volumes. And this is our, our references. And thank you so much.